next on It's Your Season. What about the press down, shaking together, running? What about going into, I don't, I know it, but I'm trying, and I understand we have to use wisdom, but our relationship with the Lord shouldn't have to suffer because society is suffering. We should be the light that's shining in a dark world. We must be able to stand up when others are sitting down. We must put a smile on our face when others are wearing a frown. Song writer said, for we are the soul of the earth. Listen, greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I'm Bishop Keith Felton, Senior Pastor of Trinity Christian Center. I am so delighted to be bringing you the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. Even in the midst of this pandemic, we've been preaching that which becomes a sound doctrine, not just locally, but around the nation, reaching millions by way of television. And we're so delighted to be reaching you in your living room. Listen, this message I know is going to change your life. Listen, change the course of where you see things as God reveals himself through this message. Watch this. Bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Can we read it again together one more time? I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Amen. You know, you know, when God gave me this right, when he gave me this text to, to, to begin to teach, amen, we're going to go through a few more scriptures, but he gave me this text to preach. And, and, and you got to understand this particular verse of scripture means so much in this day and time. I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Listen, I want to teach from the subject this morning, continual praise. Look at somebody say continual praise. I believe with all my heart that we are living in a time that God is literally showing us the, 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 the part-time praises from the full-time praises. I believe that God is showing us in, in the midst of a pandemic that there are some people that are coming to church and participating in church just because it's people here. Or to, to, to let people know what they have on or to let people know what their, 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 their status is. And I believe with all my heart we're living in a time as the pandemic has, listen, presented itself. God is, is sifting out the sanctuary for the true praises, the true worshipers. The true men and women that say, you know what? I'm going to press my way. I'm going to do this, not because I'm doing it for man or show or the approval of my peers, but I'm, I'm praising the Lord based upon that I love him. Look at somebody say, this is a real praise. A real praise that God is showing us right now are men and women who are willing to go out on the limb to please God. And, and I believe what we're living in a day and time right now, that the true church, sometimes we always think that the church has to be overflowing and packed, but God just needs a faithful few. Because when you're going through in your personal life, it's not a church full of people in your life. It's only you and who the people that's going through with you, and your praise can't stop because people are not participating. The, the, the psalm writer say, I will, I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall what? Continually. That means that we have to continually give praise to God in the midst of a pandemic, in the midst of failure and famine. We have to continually bless the Lord at all times. My praise does not stop because I'm in the midst of a pandemic. That means that when my praise go forward, listen, when my praise go forward, that means that's out of a relationship with the Lord. I don't bless the Lord because, listen, I don't bless the Lord because he gave me a car, a house, a land. I bless the Lord and praise him because of who he is. And you cannot get to that level in the things of God if you're just praising God based upon how you feel. You cannot praise and bless the Lord based upon how you feel because he puts you in situations that your feelings go numb. Somebody knows what I'm talking about. It's hard to press the, uh, praise the Lord when your feelings are always like, oh, yeah. God said, I got to make her happy. I got to make him happy for me to get praise out of them. But God said, I want to see what they praise me like when I make nothing happen for their lives. And they can't even feel if I'm in their life. And the bills are overdue and, the, and things are, uh, are running out of time to do get done. And God said, I want to see if you're going to bless me at all times. I want to see if it's going to be a continual praising me in the midst of your, listen, pandemic, your frustration. God said, I'm looking or striving for you in you a spirit of what? Maturity. Oh, you're hearing what I'm saying? That, that means that the pandemic has...
has released, listen, movement from maturity. Now, maturity is, listen, pressing their ways, but movement is looking for people to gather back. That God said, I don't care if I never gather my people back inside of a sanctuary. There always will be a remnant. There always will be a remnant that will give God praise in the midst of their circumstances. Amen. We're just building right now because God wants us to share. God wants me to share some things with you. Do you not know that? God said, I need you to understand that when you're able to praise me in the midst of the most horrific times of your life, God said, then you have my stamp of approval. See, you don't want to be approved by anybody else but God. I don't care if they pat you on your shoulder or they give you a high five. Man's approval is not that of God's approval. When you begin to bless, uh, bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continually be in your mouth and you give him a continual praise, you get God's stamp of approval. That means that I know God said, I can trust this man, I, I can trust this woman because they're not going to praise me for when they're in the penthouse, but they're going to praise me when they're in the pit. When you're praised in the pit, as much as it is in the penthouse, then God said, I can trust you with that praise that I put in you because that praise that I put in you was not just given to you overnight. The songwriter said, I will bless the Lord. Before you can praise him, you got to bless him. Mm. I'm trying to break this down. Before you can praise him, you got to bless. I will bless the Lord at all times. That word bless me today, I will give him my best at all times. I will bless him with a fatty cow. I will bless him with the first fruit of my increase. I will bless him at all times. And even times when it seemed like I shouldn't be blessed, I'm going to bless him at all times. You notice he didn't say we're going to bless the Lord at all times because sometimes we're not going to do what you do. Are y'all getting anything out of this? Sometimes the corporate person, the corporate body, won't do what the individual person would do. That's something that I would do that you won't do. So he could not write it that we will bless the Lord at all times because I don't know what you'll do half the time. But I know what I would do. Tell somebody, say, I know what I would do. I know what I would do. Joshua would say, 20, Joshua uh, 24 and 15, as it for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Joshua was basically saying that. I don't know what you're going to do with your family. But as for me and my family, we are going to bless the Lord. We're going to keep him first. And in the midst of this pandemic, God said, I don't care what you do when I reassemble everybody. I don't care what you do when the, when the sanctuaries are packed and overflowing. I want to see who you are when nobody's showing up. I want to see where you are individually. I want to see if you're going to still maintain your cadence and your conviction. Or you're just waiting for somebody to see you. Preach all day, bitch. Can I get a witness? I love preaching like this. Good old-fashioned preaching. God said, I want to see if you're going to wait till everybody get together so they can show, they, they, they can see how much you praise me and how much you bless me. But can you bless me in the midst of when nobody showing up? Amen. I heard somebody shouting. I was in the office and said, somebody's getting the spirit. I seen the woman of God shouting. God said, this exemplifies what you're getting ready to teach. She had no idea what I was getting ready to teach. When you can bless the Lord like she's blessed the Lord and like we had blessed the Lord in the midst of what we're going through in, in this nation and in this world, that lets you know that praise is not a made-up praise. Oh, my goodness. It's not a fake praise. It's a praise that had been cultivated down through conditions and circumstances that created the praise in your mouth. Uh, because sometimes you can go through something, all you got is to bless the Lord. You don't have any money, you don't have any friends, you don't have anybody calling you or emailing you or taking you out. So you get by yourself and you begin to bless the Lord by yourself. Mm. Told somebody, said 95% of the time when I pray, listen, I'm praying by myself. I don't have to have a bunch of people to pray because they might not want to go as far as I want to go. They might not be praying on the same wavelength as I'm praying on, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's just that I have to learn how to do it for myself. Now, my next point is this. If you don't cultivate a lifestyle before God for yourself, you will always look at somebody else to get their approval. Am I doing this right? Did it seem like I look crazy? It did, it did, it. God said, that's public approval. Public approval has nothing to do with the praise that we give God. You know that you're praising and blessing God when the public wants you to shut up. When they tell you you're praising them too much. It don't take all that. What's wrong with you? That's when you know that you're in the will of God. Because God's praise.
praise will disrupt everybody's. Oh my, I gotta slow down. When you're really praising and blessing God, you'll be like blind Bartimaeus. He said, Jesus, thy son of David. He said, why ye trouble the master? Your praise will trouble your circumstance. It will trouble people around you. It will trouble the spirit of God to cause the spirit of God to move on your behalf. I mean, the old folks used to say, if you praise him, you'll raise him. If you don't praise him, you'll never raise him to the point of your life that he can be functional in your faith. Are oh, y'all hearing what I'm saying? Let me give you an illustration. That was a thing that was going on one time with our car back in the days. Took it to the mechanic. The mechanic said, it has to have a certain level of ohms or spark to ignite this particular aspect of the car. Meaning, if it does not have enough power going to it, then what it's designed to do won't do it. So the front of the burger got happy then because I realized that as he was teaching me about the car, God was teaching me about him. He said, that's, he said, there's a certain level of, of, of power that has to go through this particular thing that's inside the car. And if it doesn't get the right power, it doesn't function the way it's designed to function. And God said, it's the same thing in our relationship with the Lord. We have to praise God. There's a certain level of praise that God wants us to give in him in his presence so it can activate the presence and the blessings over our lives. There's a certain level of praise, a certain level of attitude, there's a certain level of blessings that you have to bring forth out of your spirit before it activates the things of God in your life. If it does not come up the par to what it's supposed to be in your life, it won't activate different functions. Things don't light up as fast as it used to light up because you're not praising him on the level that you're supposed to praise him. And I begin to look at it and say, that's why it doesn't light up. This light you see is you let you know that something is wrong. But when this light goes off, it lets it know that it's getting the right power. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? That God said there's a certain level that you as an individual, whether you male or female, that you've got to give God honor in your life. You got to give him presence and power in your life. You got to give him or acknowledge him in all thy ways in your life. And then he will direct your path. And then he will begin to light things up. And then he will open up the windows of heaven and pull you out of blessing. But first, you got to give him everything. Oh, y'all hearing what I'm saying? Do you not realize that God is saying right now, blessing me and continue to bless me is, is the prerequisite before you can praise me because how can you praise anything you're not willing to bless? That's why it's so important to give him your best, whether it's giving your best with giving or giving your best with time or giving your best with your prayer life. You have to give him your best and never allow anybody to define what is your best because only you know what your best is. People can say, oh, you can do better than that. How do they know what your better is? Oh my goodness, how, how do they possibly know what your better is? You may be doing the best you can do right now, but as long as it is your best. Somebody say, give him your best. As long as you're giving him the best sacrifice of your life, the best sacrifice of your time, the best sacrifice of your giving, the best sacrifice of what he has created in you, you can go to sleep at night knowing that I've done my best. The problem in the body of Christ is when we know we have not done our best before God. We put excuses out before him. We put this out before him and expect him to receive it. But God said, that is not your best. And God has begun to deal with me adamantly about saying this. Uh, the people of God are betwixt and between. They, they confuse and they distraught. Why? Because we know subconsciously we're not giving God our best. Oh, my goodness. See, 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 man is not the determining factor about what I give God my best. I'm the determining factor. Because I know and you know, and all around the world, we all know that we're not doing our right, we're not, when we're not doing right by God, don't nobody have to tell you that but you. <laughs> and I know this is no good. I know you I thought this is gonna be a shout. This is a shouting word. I'm about to jump out my shoes right now. No one has to tell you when you're not doing your best. Oh, y'all hearing what I'm saying? You can take a teacher, meet with the parent, but the student knows subconsciously that the reason why my parent is here because I'm not doing my best. I don't care how much the teacher talk to the parent. I don't care how much the parent talk to the teacher, but it's the individual or the child that has to make hear her mind to realize that I've got to do my best. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? And God began to share with me this. Don't give me your best when I answer your prayers. Give me your best before your prayers are answered. 
so that I know that you're not praising me and blessing me because I bless your life. Bless me and praise me when it looks like your life doesn't make sense. That's why you have to continue to bless him. You have to continue to give him worship even when it doesn't make sense to let you know and the God that created you know that this is not a fake worship. This is not a worship just to get me out of trouble. This is not a worship because I cussed or I drank. This is not a worship because I did this and did that. God said, you have to be a genuinely worship that I will, I will individually bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continually, come. listen, be in my mouth. Oh, y'all hearing what I'm saying? I feel like I'm getting ahead of myself. Amen. So nowadays, I, I, I begin to just meditate on this word. I say, God, nowadays it seems like when we come to church, we're doing you a favor. Nowadays, people will put you off. I'm coming to church, but we never come to church. I, I, I'm going to pray more. We never pray. But as soon as hell break loose, we want to access heaven. As soon as the chips are down, we want to access heaven. You cannot access heaven when all hell breaks loose. You have to access heaven before hell breaks loose. Uh, so why is that, Bishop? Easy. Because when you praise him before the trouble come, you trust him in the midst of the trouble. But if you wait till trouble come, are oh, y'all hearing what I'm saying? If you wait till trouble come and you begin to praise him, then you don't trust him in the midst of the trouble. Because you have to build up your most holy faith in the things of God. Uh, I don't know who I'm preaching to. Maybe I'm just preaching to myself. Do you not realize that God said, I am tired of my people waiting for things to get right to give me a continual praise. I, I'm tired of them living the way they want to live and think they can give me a praise when it comes on their mind. But I'm looking for a people. I've prepared a people. I'm releasing a people that will give me praise in the midst of their circumstance, uh, in the midst of the, what they're going on in their finance, uh, in the midst of their relationship. That I'm looking for a people and I'm releasing a people that will bless me at all times and my praise shall continually be in their mouth. Oh, y'all hearing what I'm saying? God said, time out for the show off praise. Time out for the show off, look at me, look at me. God said, I'm looking for people that when they open up their mouth, uh, demons are trembling and, and hell is being broken loose in all people's life because they're worshiping me and praising me at a relationship, not based upon what people say about them. I mean, you cut up today. I mean, the spirit was on. What used to you cutting up and, and jumping around the church if your life is not in order? Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Preach on, bitch. Continue with praise in spite of. One of the things about preaching the gospel, it may not make sense when the preacher's preaching it. Look at somebody say, but keep living. Sister Palmer, your daughter's a mama now. Now, young mama, everything mama used to teach you, you got to teach it to your kid. Now, let me share that. I share this with everybody. Can't nobody get under your skin like your children. Welcome to the club. Amen. I'm going to write you, a, uh, every mother of them, I'm going to try to write you a letter and say, it's, it's not what you thought it was. First lady, tell you straight up, can't nobody get under your skin like your children. Stay tuned. There's more to come. My goodness, you got to get this right here. Some of the things that you're going through and this relationship and this dispensation of your life, it shouldn't bother you as bad as it used to do me 10 years ago because you done been through some stuff. Meaning that when your relationship with God is intact and you have the, the teaching and you have the foundation, God said, now I can deploy you to go into the hospitals, to go into the sick rooms, to go into the cancer wards, to be able to deserve what you need to be around and not be around because you have the power to keep you. And if you don't trust God's judgment, you'll be shackled to a number and not chained to the name of Jesus. Oh, y'all got to get that right now. That's why right now, as even as I'm preaching this gospel right now, there's somebody who is sick to death with what they're doing. They're just so disgusted. And they may smile in front of your face. Oh, I got to go to work tomorrow. But down in the recesses of their spirit, they're so sick of the job. They don't know what to do because the plan of God is activated in their life. We want to thank you for your ongoing support and prayers as Bishop Felton takes the gospel around the world. Now, back to the message. And God designed it like that. Listen, so we can walk into what mom and them, what we thought, listen, what we thought was the, was the terrible, you can't do this, you can't do this. Only them was protecting us. Oh, y'all hearing what I'm saying? They were only protecting us, but some things you got to live through to understand. 
Oh, help me, Holy Spirit. Some things in this life, you can hear me preaching on the pulpit. You can hear the television preacher preaching. You can look it on the radio. Listen, some things that God is saying, you're going to have to live through to find out if you're really praising him for real. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? We've got, we got members. We've got members that have buried loved ones. We have members that's on the verge of burying loved ones. And, and they can take you straight up. If it wasn't for their praise and their sacrifice for the God of the Bible, where would they be? Where would they be? They would have lost their mind. They would have been eating cotton off the floor. But they learned how to bless him at all times. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? They've learned how to say, God, I know you're, you're taking me through something that I can't control. God, I know I'm experiencing something in my finance that I can't control. But I hear the Spirit of God saying, you remember I took you through something last year or the year before last uh, to prepare you for what you're going through right now. And God, I hear God saying right now, now praise me now like you praised me back then. Uh, Praise me now like you praise me in your living room. Praise me now like you praise me on your lunch break. Praise me now like you praised on 77. Praise me now. Give me praise in the midst of what you're going through because God said, I'm not finished with you yet. Listen. Listen, listen. Because when you praise God, when you're going through something, you're able to Rightfully divided. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? There's a long word in Greek called ortho tumaya. It means to cut straight. Ortho means to straighten. Tumaya means to cut. That means that you have to be able to cut straight. That we, that's why the Bible says so we can discern the, 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 the good and perfect will. You have to have a mind to straighten things out. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? When you're going through something and the Holy Spirit gives you a mind to keep your life straight. And everybody says you ought to do this and you ought to do that. But the Bible says the steps of a good man or a good woman are ordered by the Lord. And the reason why you're here today is because God kept you cutting things straight in your mind. Does somebody know what it feels like when you're going through hell and high water and you try, you're praying for God not to work out the situation because he got it in his hands but God keep my mind in perfect peace because if I go crazy everything around me is going to flitter right through my fingers but thank God that he's given you the power that when all hell was breaking loose and nobody didn't want anything to do with you God said now praise me right here give me a praise give me a sacrifice and you go to speaking in tongues and you go to walking around your house and you get up in the middle of the night you just start raving your hand and God say I'm cultivating in you a praise and a worship that even when you're by yourself, even when there's nobody shouting your praise, God said I'm teaching you how to give me praise and blessings at all times. Mm. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Woo! Hallelujah. Paul told Timothy, listen, he told, you can go read it in your, in your private time, 2 Timothy 2 and 15, Amen. It was basically telling me this right here. You got to study to show yourself approved. Oh, y'all hear what I'm saying? And, and sometimes, I, 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 as I'm walking with the Lord, God said, the greatest study that I can show you about yourself is the life that I put you in. You, you'll never know who you are until you go through something. I don't care how cute you look with your hair done and your nails did. I don't care how good you look in your suit, but you got to go through something. You got to go through something that'll make you sweat out your hat and sweat up your shoe, shake off your nails, and you got to put more glue on it. You, you got to go through something that will make you lose your mind until you don't know what's going on. You, has anybody ever gone through something where you're not even enthused about leaving the house? You're not even enthused about talking to people. You're not even enthused because they don't know where you're at. And God said, I held you in the midnight hour, and you praised me in the midst of me burying your loved one. And you praised me in the midst of them telling you that you got to get, get out of your place. You praised me while you watched them take your car out of your driveway. You praise me when your, when your house seemed like it was flipped upside down. And God said, I cultivate something inside of you that if you can praise me in the midst of the most horrific times of your life, uh, then you qualify to praise me when you're on top of the mountain. Uh, you're qualified to praise me when the heaven breaks loose. Uh, you're qualified to praise me because he said, I know you will bless me at all times and your praise of God shall continually be in his mouth. Hallelujah. Somebody say, steady yourself. Most of the things I want to, I want, most of the things I want, by the grace of God, I pray. And y'all going to hear me say this again. After this pandemic is over, God said, now you're going to find out who's really real. 
Life can give you things that make you study others. And we, when, when it was good time, we said, I'm going in the enemy's camp and I'm taking back everything that the devil stole from me and can't no devil in hell stop me from getting to this, that, the other and this, that. And, I, and God said, look at this. Look at the pandemic. Look how it has released people to do what they really feel. I, oh, y'all hear what I'm saying? What about the press down, shaking together, running? What about going into, I don't, I know it, but I'm trying. And I understand we have to use wisdom, but our relationship with the Lord shouldn't have to suffer because society is suffering. We should be the light that's shining in a dark world. We must be able to stand up when others are sitting down. We must put a smile on our face when others are wearing a frown. So all right, said, for we are the salt of the earth. And what good is salt? So Jesus said, if the salt has left, as, as, as the savor of the salt has left. Uh, tell somebody, I don't want to lose my saltiness. I don't care what's going on in society. I still want to be salty. I want to be able to be that light uh, in a dark world. Uh, I want to be able to say, let the world know, you worrying, but I'm worshiping you. You panicking, but I'm praising God. I don't want to be lost in this, saint, in, this, this, in this society because I refuse to worship Jesus. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? And I believe with all my heart that God is saying right now that when he reassembles the body, there will be a difference in our praise. There's going to be a difference in this staff. There's going to be a difference in the atmosphere because God said, now I have sustained you through faith. Oh, y'all hearing what I'm saying? It is faith. Somebody say faith. My last point of this, the reason why we're still shouting and the reason why we're still giving him glory it's because of our faith. My, how the time flies, but we're not out of word. I'm so excited to have brought to you the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. In the midst of this pandemic, the gospel is being preached, not just locally, but around the world. And you say to yourself, how can I get more preaching like this, more material? Stay tuned. The next voice you hear will guide you in how to acquire this message and many others for your video or just library and public. Listen until next Saturday on this station. It's your season. Thank you for tuning in to today's broadcast. We are so honored to have shared this time with you. If this message has truly blessed you and you desire a copy as well as other ministry materials, please stay tuned. Tell somebody, I don't want to lose my saltiness. I don't care what's going on in society. I still want to be salty. I want to be able to be that light. A... For your love gift of any size, you will receive this message in its entirety on CD. World, I, I want to be able to say, let the world know you worrying, but I'm worshiping you. You panicking, but I'm praising God. I don't want to be lost in this saint, in this, this, in this society. For your love gift of $25, we will send you this dynamic message on CD and DVD. Because I refuse to worship Jesus. Are oh, y'all hearing what I'm saying? And I believe with all my heart that God is saying right now that when he reassembles the body, there will be a difference in our praise. There's going to be a difference in this staff. There's going to be a difference in the atmosphere. And when your love gift is $50, we will send you this message on CD, DVD, and this inspiring book by Bishop Felton. We want to thank you for your ongoing support and prayers as Bishop Felton takes the gospel around the world. Until next time, it's your season.